Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast. I am Ross Bolin, joined by Jared Borislow, the man they call J-Bone. Say hello to the beautiful people, Jared, and only the beautiful people. Hello, beautiful people, and if you're ugly, I hope you didn't hear that. I'm kidding. You're all beautiful on the inside where I'm, it counts. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Speaking of insides, I'm 35 years old now, and I'm fairly confident I'm still undoing the damage... I did to my body in college, my poor, poor insides. Outside, I look okay. Like, you can't really tell how much horrible shit I did. But I know there was damage done in there that I can't even really, like, that I can't account for. I can't speak for everyone listening, but I can speak for Jared and I. And we truly, really treated our bodies like human trash cans during college. Like, I was ripping cigarettes, crushing beers... And all manner of liquors, snorting anything that could be crushed, sticking it in any hole I could find. I'm kidding about the snorting. It is a minor miracle that I am still here considering how terribly I treated my vessel. I ate Chipotle and Taco Bell and chicken fingers almost exclusively for years, during which I was binge drinking several nights a week and routinely sleeping past noon. I was shot in the chest with a blow dart gun, nearly pierced my heart. I ate dog and cat food and a cigarette sandwich. As part of a fraternity ritual, I once tried to hurl my drunken body from one balcony to another in college and was short several feet and landed on a trash can full of water, like, likely shattering several of my ribs. Uh, I did not go to the doctor. Jared routinely spent time in actual trash cans. Hmm? It was called Oscar the Grouch. I would get hammered, go into a, a trash can, a city trash can, uh, and yell at people. There's video of that as well. Yeah. Jared, I, what's, the, yeah. Uh, what's the most disturbing thing? that you did to your body in college that you haven't already shared. There's been such a laundry list for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, There's we've talked about the rest quite a bit. Don't need to rehash those, but... Uh, and the trash can alone says a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one time in the beginning of college, uh, I didn't drink in high school, so when I got to college, uh, you know... It's, Loser! It's, yeah, yeah, thank you. It's dangerous, everybody knows, to go to college uh, without drinking, you know, a little bit beforehand because I mean, you don't just, know your limits. Sure. I mean, look... I've got, there's two sides to this. I, don't, I have a buddy that did not drink in high school. He's one of my best friends. And it was weird to me then, for sure. I was like, what the fuck? Now that I don't drink as an adult, it's obviously, in hindsight, not weird to me. But the fact that he was able to maintain, like, sobriety through all manner of peer pressure and, and I mean, because, like, he didn't go out all of the time. You know, he wasn't always out, like, at the parties and shit. But he went out sometimes, and he didn't drink. And that was amazing to me. No, it's not so amazing because I do it, but you know, there's also not that kind of party anymore and that level of peer pressure. And I'm well, there is that kind old. of party. You're you stop just not caring invited. what people think as much. Yeah, sure, exactly. There is that kind of party. I'm just definitely not invited. Um, but I also had a dude that was in my pledge class. It's the, it's like the you know, Jared, you the class you go into your fraternity with, and uh, in college, and he didn't drink in high school, and things didn't go well for him. Because he had no idea what he was getting himself into in terms of what alcohol yeah. did to you and what being drunk was. Yeah, so that's that's kind of where my story happened. This this was probably one of my first, I would say one of my first, like, definitely first ten times, potentially even first, like, six times getting drunk. Um, me, I went this with... in college. In college, uh, freshman year. First ten times for sure getting drunk, yeah. ever. My, uh, one of my friends, my dorm floor was like, Hey, one of my buddies from back home lives nearby. We're just going to drink at his place. There's like, people listening who got to their 10th time by eighth grade. Yes. For you sure. know what I'm saying? Probably some who by fifth yes. grade. Yeah. And, and I'm that's eight, really problematic, yeah. but it's also true. And I'm 18 at this point. Yeah. Okay. So he's like, yeah, we're going to go drink at my buddy from back home's house. I was like, I was like, dope. I, I'm a freshman in a new state where I don't know anybody. Uh, I'm just, I don't care where I get drunk. I'm J bone and I just want to party. Yeah. I, I don't care where I just want to, like, I need somebody who can get me alcohol and I'll go wherever that is. That's yeah. where I'm at. Freshman year, you know, beginning of college, don't know anybody in the state. I'd, I'd say that's a fairly normal place to be headspace-wise. We get to this guy's house. It's like, it ends up being like two dudes who live there, me and two other friends from my dorm floor. It's like the scene from Training Day. <laughs> so it's, it's just five of us, and there's just a handle of Mr. Boston's vodka, and uh, there was like a, like a, uh, it was like a Mountain Dew or a Monster Energy Chaser, and I remember shots came on, and they had like a, some light display going in there, and it's just five dudes... Shots comes on. We're just taking pulls of this Mr. Boston's. I'm so unbelievably trashed because I, I have no idea how much alcohol is too much. The friend I'm with gets alcohol poisoning. 
I luckily avoid it, but I was unbel- like puking in somebody else's room on my dorm floor. Um, and that was that was by far and away the drunkest I've ever been. And it was within the first time, 10 times I've been drunk. It was very bad. A uh, friend should have gone to the hospital. Didn't because we were dumb freshmen on a dorm floor. They, they, I woke up the next day. They're like, I was like, how's Sam? They're like, yeah, he survived. He was purple for a good amount of the night. I saw a guy get alcohol poisoning that survived because he was properly cared for, and it was fucking disgusting. Yeah, so here's I mean, the deal. He was vomiting uh, an obscene amount. If you ever think your friend might be suffering from alcohol poisoning, well, yeah, obviously go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. It's go not, hospital, it's man, not worth it. Whatever you're doing in your head in terms of consequence weighing, the consequences of not taking him to the hospital are severely worse, and there's no amount of fucking mental gymnastics that no. you can do to undo that statement. No way. So you have to do it. Yeah, it's the only move. You oh my god, go my fraternity hospital. might get kicked out. It doesn't and you don't matter. throw them out the fucking door onto the step of the hospital. Go into the hospital, explain to them what's going on. You're probably going to get in significantly less trouble if you handle it that way than the dumbass way of either not going to yeah. the hospital, not calling an, ambul- an ambulance, or just throwing them out the door. It's it's just do your friends you know, a favor. Look out, twenty twenty two. Come on, look out for each other. And if you're shit faced and you're like, I can't drive to the hospital, get a fucking lift or call an ambulance. Either way. It's a life and death thing. You don't weigh the stupid ass probation you might get against someone maybe dying. That's yeah. That makes you an incredibly selfish ass clown. It also is the mindset of many, many eighteen year olds across the country. So I get it. I was I was one of you, but yeah, that's an easy one, man. Just hammer that one into your brain. Yeah. After your someone friend gets sick and starts like you know unnecessarily an amount of vomiting going on or whatever, like a crazy amount of vomiting going on. Uh, or anything like that, yeah, just go to the hospital. After your friend has gotten to the point where they're that drunk, they have forfeited the right for you to, like, look out for them. In, in, by, sorry, look out for them in terms of not going to the hospital. Like, oh. Yeah, they're giving you power of attorney. Yes, exactly. Honestly, yes. If your friend is that drunk, you have power of attorney to send them to the hospital. They, they can't wake up and be like, bro, why'd you do this that? This is your legal like, advice, but they've given you power of attorney. Yeah. Yeah, you should have let roll the dice. What? Nobody says that after the fact. No. <laughs> Why'd you take care of me? Yeah. No, nobody's ever said. Don't worry about that part. Just go to the fucking hospital. Yeah. But yeah, man, shots are what'll get you. Like in college, especially the song too. I just took wait. Fuck shots, that song. Shots, that song shots, sucks. Shots, shots. Uh, I took way too many shots, man. Like. So many shots of of rumple mints. I don't know why that was like our main one, but also like whiskey, tequila, vodka. I'm about to throw up in my mouth right now. Uh, I routinely bummed Marlboro Reds off some guy when I was shit-faced. Why? Why? Like, the way I yeah. treated my body in college is the reason I don't really flinch when I feel a random ache or pain anymore. Yeah. Because I earned those. Like, I deserve them, and I will power through them And as an aging liberal hippie douche. Okay, I did remember. Uh, I So, before the show, Ross and I were like, Joe, you need to think of stuff you haven't talked about before. And that was the first one I thought of, and I just thought of another one. My 19th birthday, Ross. Okay. My 19th birthday. Uh, you know, I get to pick what I wanted to do, right? It was it was on a, on a weeknight. <laughs> I guess. It, yeah, yeah, sure. It was on a weeknight. Some some people do get to pick what they want to do on their birthday. <laughs> it was on a weeknight. I was not in a fraternity yet. Had nowhere to really party. So I was like, okay, I'm going to bring the party to my, my dorm. So I had one of my friends pick me up my drink of choice for the night. Jaeger bombs. Yeah. Ross? A lot of Jaeger bombs. So the plan was, everybody's just going to roll through and do Jaeger bombs with me in my, in my dorm. Now, here's the issue. Jaeger Ross, was all right, and it got you fucked up. Oh, I, I still like Jaeger. When we, we used to do, like, bottles of alcohol for your birthday at our old company, and I, I'd always do Jaeger. Now, the issue is, when you're the guy... What a problematic <laughs> cultural fucking thing to have. Anyway, go on. When you're the guy whose birthday it is, uh, you're taking a Jaeger bomb every time somebody wants to take one with you. I'm just taking them, like, you know, at the top of the hour. So... On my birthday, on my 19th birthday, I did tw- 12 Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Each Jaeger bomb contained one third of a can of Red Bull. Jaeger bombs. Dude, that's too much Red Bull. So You're I did have I a drank heart attack, four, bro. I drank four Red Bulls. <laughs> do you know how bad that is for your system on the whole? Like, th- this is probably the most disturbing thing we do nationwide as college kids. We crush hard liquor mixed with. Red Bull or any other assorted energy drink. And that's just god awful for your heart. Yeah. It's so bad for you. So bad. And the and thing it's is, just a, it's yeah. just totally culturally accepted. And the thing is, now I was so drunk, I don't remember if it was four or two. It was minimum two, guaranteed two, if not three. It was minimum two, up to four Red Nobody Bulls. Nobody cares. Here's the thing getting fucked up is fun as shit. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. It's, it's so much fun. That's the amazing thing. 
Partying is so much fun that we all go back, even with the crippling hangovers, the throwing up, people dying of alcohol poisoning, it routinely just being certified health-wise as like poison for your body. We still go back because partying is that fun. That's how much fun it is to get fucked up, to get drunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, You know how many people have woken up and gone, I am never drinking again, and then gone and drank again? It is a number in the fucking billions, it's every Jared. person who's ever drank. Billions of people. So that night I, I passed out at 10 p.m. and I woke up at 4 a.m. from the Red Bull after the alcohol made me pass out and I couldn't sleep. I just stayed awake the next day. I'm coming up on five years without a hangover. And whew, that is the thing. Like, you know, there's there's a, every once in a while when I'm at like a nice dinner, I'll be like, fuck, I, I, I miss red wine. Yeah. This would have been a great time to have a glass of red wine. But those moments are completely offset by me just remembering like you would be several hundred more hangovers deep right now on the we started the top of the show me talking about the wear and tear of my body i'd be so much worse off and i'm already not in a great spot like i said i can feel it in there there's just I've, i'm 62 years old on the inside why don't you just start drinking grape juice does grape juice cure that no how about not not grape juice it should specifically be juicy juice remember juicy juice Comes in the massive, like the biggest can you've ever seen, and then and you get the can opener and you just like plug a little hole in it, and you you're be at like summer camp when you're like seven years old and you're just pouring juice out of the massive can of juicy juice. Oh yeah, I remember juicy juice. Yeah, I had the regular box though, like the little box. Yeah. Oh yeah. Size. And what's funny? So juicy juice is actually also what they call my big fat ass. Damn juicy juice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, seriously though, the difference between 18 and 35 in terms of like how much it takes to make me tired or like how much energy I have in general now compared to college, it has me pretty concerned for the difference between 35 and 52. Mm -hmm. Like in 2040, this show is just me napping, it's snoring into the microphone. <laughs> and some people consider that to be ASMR, Jared included. He cranks to my snores. I do. He does. Yeah. Anyway. We got an email. Just this was not a this, this is not a planned point of conversation. We got an email just before the show. All right, I'm throwing them under the bus here from Google Fiber. Okay, Google Fiber is our internet service provider here at Bolin Media headquarters in Austin, Texas. Phenomenal provider. We have Incredible the best internet. We have the best internet of any media company in Austin. Guaranteed. Probably available in the United States, <laughs> like arguably. Um, it's unbelievably fast. It's awesome. But the other day we got our, uh, our shit upgraded to like their latest stuff. They're really good about this. It's not like your trash cable company, whoever's listening to where they call you like every four and a half years to be like, Hey, your box is so old that it's about to stop functioning. Please get one of the seven versions we've released since we gave you that one. No, they bring you that shit with Google fiber, except the guy that brought it to us. I'll just put it this way was generally unkempt. The man did not smell okay and i'm being friendly with my body odor uh shaming right now okay i'm trying to be considerate but it was bad really really bad like fuck dude and i was super nice nobody said anything it was nothing like that but we get this email today this it says your google fiber service technician tested positive for covid19 and we just wanted to let you know which is much much funnier than you realize right now because it was 18 days ago that the man was here. They sent us an email 18 days after the fact to let us know, hey, if you're just getting over COVID, this is why you had it. Why? How does that cover anyone's bases insurance-wise or anything? 18 fucking days have passed, amigo. How are you going to send that email, Jared? I, I, I truly don't get it. And again, there's no way they're... It's probably more... They're bringing about more potential for legal action against yes. them by sending this email. People are going, motherfucker, it was the Google Fiber guy. <laughs> and now they're pissed off. They didn't care before. They had no idea. Probably didn't even consider it. Like, uh, like us. I mean, I, I, thankfully yeah. nobody's been sick since then. Yeah. But holy shit. 18 days. Ah. <sighs> Man, I'm, I'm wondering when, like, COVID scares will stop being a thing. Because nobody refers to the flu that way. Like, I was potentially exposed to the flu today. I'm going to lock down. Nobody does that, right? I'm wondering when we're going to get to that point of the pandemic when it's like... Because, right, it's too often right now, again. It's like once a week we have one. 
And we only have a small company. There's That's only true. four of us. Yeah. Three, well, three of us are full time. I mean, we're all in and out. It's like for big companies where there are a shitload of people working, which I'm sure some of you listening are in that boat. I'm curious, how often are y'all dealing with this? Jared's having to test himself like every day. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, just, I'm exposed. He's our go-to guy. He's just like, I'll get tested again. I'm the exposure man. That's my that's my superhero. Repeatedly exposed, but never have tested positive. Or some wood. Wow. I need wood to you knock. You need to knock, yeah. The, the, the walls The walls, the walls not wood. There's it's, no, you have a wainscoting. What do you think drywall's made of, Jared? You have wainscoting. Plastic? Anyway, knocked, shouts to Google Fiber. I knocked twice, as we learned from Todd Gresley, the curator of AO5 Gallery. You knocked twice. You knock twice when you knock on wood. Not more than twice. That's right. Not less than twice. That's a hell of a throwback there, Jared. Check it out on Patreon.com slash Ross One of my, one of my favorite episodes, we, we uh, interviewed a local art gallery director, Todd. Guy's fucking awesome. I need to hit him up again, see if he wants to come back. You can tell how fun much, to talk about yeah. art with people. You can tell how much that conversation stuck with me and that I remembered how many times you're supposed to knock on wood. I don't have any valuable art, but I would love to one day. That would be sick. I really like art. I have a lot of art. It's just cheap art. We need to ask Todd about NFTs. <laughs> That'd be a fucking hilarious <laughs> conversation, dude. Oh my God, we have to do it. We have to schedule that. But anyway, yeah, good job, good effort. Good job, good effort. Uh, Google, Google Fiber. Fiber. That was that was something else. Today's episode of RBP is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs have completely changed the game. Bird Dog shorts, pants, and joggers are made from the finest high-quality material and come with built-in liners that cradle your stovepipe for all-day comfort. Who the fuck likes being uncomfortable? It's time you upgrade to the shorts and pants of the future. Your balls will thank you. Go with Bird Dogs. The joggers are phenomenal. They're very comfortable. They look very nice. You could wear them to pretty much any circumstance. A nice dinner to the gym or to sleep. That's what's so great about bird dogs, but not just their joggers, their shorts. It is summer. It is hot. I'm wearing these things a lot. Go to birddogs.com, enter promo code ROSS, and they'll throw in a dad hat with your order. That's birddogs.com, promo code ROSS. Boom. Free bird dogs dad hat with your pair of bird dogs. You will not take these things off. I promise you. I wear bird dogs to work out a couple times a week. I hoop in them regularly. I sleep in them regularly. They're the most comfortable all-purpose shorts I've ever worn or owned. Uh, And as they say... They dry faster than a bathing suit. Birddogs.com code Ross for that free Bird Dogs dad hat. There's one over my right shoulder if you're watching on YouTube. Did you throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier? <laughs> That's a great song. What was that? Is that Do your ears hang? No, what well, do your ears hang? Well? I was about to say Yankee Doodle Dandy. But that's not right. Nobody has ever gone, oh, that's a great song about do your ears. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's an all-time jam. Dude, do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and throw? And then there was the version about a cock and balls. There was, do your balls hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? What about you do your chain hang night? low? Can you? T- that's a great song. See, See what I'm talking about, Jared? That's a very influential song, do your ears hang low. Very influential. Nobody's ears hang that low. I don't... What's that song even? Is there like some hidden dude, meaning you've there? You've never seen anybody whose ear. That song is about people who get gauges in their ears, dude, whose ears hang <laughs> low and then wobble to and fro. It's also a cultural thing in some places, Jared. Respect the wobble to and fro ear. Nobody can tie their ears in a knot <laughs> or a bow. Throw them over your shoulder like a continental. Could all the continental soldiers throw their ears over their shoulders? <laughs> Which continent? What is a continental soldier, Jared? Is it one of those? Is it what? Is that like some sort of like racist white, like, white paramilitary group? Sounds like the next fucking Marvel movie, Captain America, Continental Soldier. Uh, the Continental Army was the army of the thirteen colonies. Oh, guess they were throwing their ears over their shoulders. Why are all these songs about the North? I grew up in Texas. Why was I taught these Yankee Doodle Dandy? I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Was that one actually making fun of the Yankees? That would make sense. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm just sad. They taught me all the backwards, like, you know, it's, extremely whitewashed version of American history. So I'm curious as to why I was learning all these northern songs. So that one has to be it has to be a propaganda hit piece, right? Well, Yankee it, Doodle Dandy. Well, it says that it, apparently it was a it was a, a play. It was a, it was a play in a theater, uh, but I don't know if the song is from the play or not. All I do know is that significant and uncredited improvements were made to the script by the twin brothers. You may have heard of them, uh, just Julius and up. Philip Epstein. Oh, the British sang one version to mock the colonial Americans. 
the Americans took ownership and turned the song into one of patriotic pride, especially during the Revolutionary War. So there's your Yankee Doodle Dandy back history. You're welcome. I think it's different Epstein's. <laughs> what are we talking about? All right, it's time for Insane Headline of the Day. We've only got one, so it's not headlines. It's just Insane Headline of the Day. You see. 101-year-old ex-Nazi guard convicted over, of over 3,500 counts of accessory to murder. That's a lot of... How many years in jail is that? Is he looking at? Oh, you're going to love this story, Jared. It's German court has found a 101-year-old former concentration camp guard guilty of being an accessory to thousands of murders and sentenced him to five years in prison. And he's 101 years old, so that's a life sentence. Five years, though, dude? Like, what? what is that? The latest in a string of prosecutions of ex-Nazis in the country. The man identified internationally as Joseph Schutz and as Joseph S. in Germany because of privacy laws. I don't, the privacy laws aren't that good if the name still gets leaked. Uh, has repeatedly denied the allegations and claimed he was an agriculture laborer in a different area of the country at the time. According to Deutsche Welle, which I assume is a news source in Germany, he was not identified at his sentencing hearing. I don't know why I am here, Schutz said on the last day of his trial, Monday, according to uh, another press name. His attorney, Stefan Waterkamp, did not immediately respond to a request for comment from the Washington Post. This is all from the Washington Post, by the way. Waterkamp previously told AFP that he would appeal a guilty verdict. According to uh, the news, Schutz is the oldest person ever tried in Germany for complicity with Nazi crimes during World War II. So 101 years old. The prosecution's case was based almost entirely off old documents. They say bear his name, which is like, I don't know. Like, what if, I don't know, what if there's more than one Joseph S., right? Joseph Stalin. Like, what if this 101-year-old random farmer is taking the rap for war crimes? I mean, I, I know he's 101 and on the way out, but like his family's name is going to incur a slight stain as a result, you know? Like, who knows? Yeah. Maybe he was a concentration camp guard. But if... He was. I wouldn't give dude five years. What, what is that? What the hell this, is that? This okay. is either death penalty or no charge. Yeah, 3,500 oh. murders in five years, bro? This man should die in the can like Johnny Sack. If I'm 101, by the way, and they drag me to court and try to pin some shit on me, I'll just be happy to be there, frankly. Like, I'm not going to do a hell of a job of defending myself at 101. Yeah, this is like, okay, we think he did it, but we're not sure. And it's like he either is going to get the death penalty or he's going to be free. So let's just give him five years, yeah, five which like years. maybe he'll die. Maybe he'll come out. Get this one off the books. You know, I'm down to do that. I'm down to close some cases for the boys in blue on my way out, I guess. It's like, well, it's whatever. It's like being an organ donor. You can take my organs. Also, you can pin some crimes on me. I don't give a fuck. My guess is that he is going to die during the appeal process. So he's never going to serve time. And he'll die an innocent man. It's a safe bet. He's in and out of the hospital, apparently, for health reasons pretty regularly this Trial. Oh, because he's 101 years old? Taken forever. Maybe maybe, maybe he's so sick because he was tilling the fields as an agricultural laborer for so many years. Getting that dust up in his lungs. Yeah. Okay, Ross, oh, right now. Oh, God, that just took my mind to a dark place. And lots of people listening's mind oh, to a yeah. dark place. Wow. Mm -hmm. Didn't yeah. need that. Well, Ross, are you going to say right now on the record that they should free Joseph S.? <laughs> no. You know, I don't think we're going to print free Joseph S. shirts and sell them on bullandmedia.com slash shop with our, uh, with our <laughs> finishing cup. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a thing. A two for one deal, buy, maybe. Buy Let's a do finishing that. cup, get a free, you free get a, Joseph S. Yeah, shirt. Buy a finishing cup, get a free Joseph, free Joseph S. shirt. <laughs> a free, free Joseph S. shirt. I'm just, dude, that's not, it seems like not very much to stand on. I'm just saying it's a lot. There's very little like if you're if you're weighing this on the scale of of <laughs> almost knocking my drink over here, weighing this on the scale of like uh, uh, risk reward. The reward, if you're right, is not that much. This old man's serving five years. Come on, he probably doesn't even know where the fuck he is. He's 101 years old. I barely know where I am. Sometime at 35, 101 years old. The guy's probably senile as hell. Five years, if you're right. That's what he serves. If you're wrong, his entire family's name? Like, imagine finding out, holy shit, Grandpa was a fucking Nazi guard? That's a tough thing to get over. That's, a ther that's like you gotta go to therapy for that shit, son. Talk it out. That's a lot to absorb. I'm just saying. But if he's guilty, you know, 
String that old fuck up. What are Hang you doing? Him. Five let's years. Let's Hang bring, his fuck ass. Let's what bring you, back the guillotine. Beat that old man to death. Do something. Kill it. With fire. What is wrong with you? Five years? Did you watch that documentary on Netflix about the Nazi guy who was living in, like, Cleveland? Fucking Nazis, man. They've just caused too much goddamn trouble. I don't care how old they are. If you find one, they need to be dealt with properly. Long sentences for the Nazis. Long sentences. Not five mm. years. Five fucking years. Hey, hey Ross, speaking of, uh, of of Germans, how you have that German grandpa who lives in Argentina. How's he doing, right? <laughs> I, do, I do not. You know what's weird, though? I pulled up my uh, 23andMe the other day. Uh, my dad got my whole family those DNA tests for Christmas one year where you get to see your, oh, nice. your ancestry. I, I hope you like China having your data. Well, I thought, yeah, that's great. And they were a sponsor of the show at one point, too. <laughs> Uh, look, man, China already has all of our data, but the and, and they're not. What are they going to do with that data? As I've said before, what what is the point of that data? What were we talking about? <laughs> You're 23 of me results. Oh yeah, so I thought I was Scottish like my whole life, and then I got those, and I'm no, nah, there's no Scottish, but it's all the boring ass white countries. None of them are Germany. I got mine back, and it said I'm 100 percent that bitch. Damn. Anyway. Uh, yeah, crazy. I didn't know. I didn't, I wouldn't have bet that we'd still be closing World War II era Nazi cases in 2022, but apparently that's still a thing. So, no, hey, enjoy it while you have it. Yeah, sure. We're not, this is, this has got to be the end of the road. For this, this is the end of the road for us being able to have Nazi war crime trials. Like, yeah. they're almost all dead by now. Nazi killers got to find a new career very soon. This is, this is probably one of the last guys, right? The Nazi hunters, those people that do oh, it yeah. full time, they got to, uh, find something else. Or focus on the neo Nazis. I guess no, there's a lot of those. True, but they should they should just start going after the uh, after like the kids, like really really str- like stringing them along. Like you motherfucker, your dad. He's like I wasn't even born yet. Go what after the, the kids. What are they gonna do to the kids? Uh, well, just to keep the legacy going. The sons of the f- sons of the father type of thing. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. Just seems like a it's a very slippery slope. Uh-huh. I should disclose I'm half Jewish, so maybe I'm being ven. Vindictive. Well, I'm just saying. I'm like, I don't want to get popped for some shit one of my dumbass relatives did. Like your grandpa in Argentina. That's I what don't have about. a grandpa in Argentina, Jared. God, don't you think that would have come up by now? My secret Nazi grandpa, <laughs> <laughs> my half Jewish Jewish co-host. Fucking a. Also, I just don't look Nazi, man. That's a very distinct thing. The 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 Germans that are like you know from that line. They they that's a specific look. It's a pretty specific look. No judgment. That's a shit thing to deal with if that's something that your family's been, you know, a part of or whatever. But, yeah, still out there hunting them. So so stay frosty, Nazis, if you're out there fucking hiding still. 101 years old, listening to the Ross Boland podcast. You, you can run, but you can't hide. But also you can't run because you're 101 years old. That's some, like... <laughs> You can neither run nor hide. <laughs> it is some seriously Carmen San Diego ass shit. They, they they're still pulling people at one hundred and one. Anyway, uh, today's episode is also brought to you by My Bookie, our sports book and online casino sponsor here at the Ross Boland Podcast. Listen, betters don't let other betters take hot action alone. Hot, so grab a action. few cold ones, call up your best buds, get ready for an action packed UFC two seventy six. Bet the fights, take your shirts off. Maybe even kiss a little bit. (laughs) Will current champion Israel Iggy Adesanya keep his title? Or will will the challenger Jared Cannonier walk out of the octagon victorious? We're backing Jared C here because we're team Jared, right Jared? Nope, there can only be one Jared. I am backing Israel. Wow! Actually though, Israel Adesanya is definitely going to win. He's amazing. Okay, all right then. Well, now uh, when you join the MyBookie community, you'll get an instant deposit bonus. Use promo code RBP to match half your deposit up to $1,000. Several big name UFC fighters are dropping their own predictions on MyBookie's social channels all week long. So there are plenty of options to choose from. If you don't know who to back, check their Instagram or their Twitter, my bookie. Bet one fight or parlay multiple bets to raise the stakes on a UFC card. That's sure to entertain. Don't forget to use our code RBP to bet with us and the rest of the my bookie community. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Code RBP to support the show and unlock that deposit bonus. Uh, I actually got stuck, like, accidentally on a, a playlist earlier that was, like, Drake-themed, I guess, on, on Spotify. It wasn't a Drake playlist. That's what was odd. Dr- it wasn't Drake radio. Uh-huh. Do you think Spotify <laughs> made that playlist for you custom because you're so soft? Maybe, but I just want to say, definitively, I am not a Drake music hater. Like, I am not. I am not a Drake hater. 
he's just a really easy target for jokes. And I do jokes for a living. I'm not a Drake hater. I'm just not in the camp of people who suck him like he's the greatest rapper ever or even living. He's undeniably great. I'd say he's the second greatest commercial rapper in history behind Kanye with less substance in his catalog. But I am not a Drake hater in terms of his music. Like, there are Drake songs. Here, I was listening to this playlist, and I made a list over, like, an hour period of Drake songs that came on that I was like, God damn, this song goes. Know Yourself, Chicago Freestyle, Get It Together, One Dance, uh, off the new album, Sticky, which has been referenced on CNN already, which is hilarious to me. Life is Good, which might actually be a future song. Uh, energy. The point is, many, many jams. And aside from the absurd way he talks and, and dresses, I'm not even sure I have a problem with his character. Either he's extremely good at keeping his shit under, under wraps, no pun intended for Adonis in that, or he's a solid dude who doesn't treat women terribly. He might try to, like, you know, hide a kid or like his ass eaten now and then, but generally seems he stays out of trouble, with, you know, with the law and whatnot. I'm not a big ass play guy or into piping porn stars, but I like basketball. I want to sit courtside at every Rockets game like he does at Raptors games. His house is patently absurd. His style and taste and fashion, inarguably off-putting. His dad's suits explain a lot now. But I feel like I could smoke a joint with Drake and relate to him on some level. And that's saying a lot about Drake. Because I he's, can. He's we're, one we're, of the most yeah. famous and wealthy people walking, though. Like, You know what I mean? Like, In terms of relatability, he still seems like he'd be a pretty easy dude to talk to. And he's one of the most famous Jews of all time. Right, he is. Right after Jesus himself. People forget. I mean, that is one of the coldest rap videos ever. It's him and Lil Wayne at a bar mitzvah. And I can't remember which song it is. Just Google Drake Lil Wayne bar mitzvah and oh, you'll what, watch the video. Wasn't it I Got a Feeling, the cover? Tonight's the night. No. Mazel tov. What is wrong him? with you? Stop bringing up I Got a Feeling. It's a fucking... Trigger for me, dude. It's a PTSD thing. I feel uncomfortable in my soul. We just talked about how horrifying college was looking back. That was a big part of it for me. Anyway, at least appears he's done a great job of staying down to earth. And I'm fairly versed at seeing through the marketing and social media bullshit. So, at this point, he just needs to stay away from the underage girls and we're good to go. We, we saw Drake live together. Uh, at ACL That's true. back in like 2016 or 17. Great, great live show. He's he, a good performer. I love how, my favorite thing he did is maybe a lot of like big name artists do this at shows. He literally would just play 45 seconds from each hit. So not all big name artists do this. It is a very cool strategy to incorporate more of your catalog into the performance. I have seen Jay-Z do it. I uh, can't think of anybody else off the top, but that's one of the biggest, that's the biggest person I've probably seen do it. And I thought it was tight. Because you're not going to get to hear all your favorite songs when it's somebody with as many hits as Drake has, as many hits as a Jay-Z has, right? So it's tight when they do that. I like that. I'm a fan of it. It's a little weird. To, it's cool. It's, no, it's actually kind of fun because you watch him get hyped to his song too. He's not like performing it. It's just like playing it for 30 seconds or whatever, you know? I don't know. I enjoy that. It's fun to me. When is ACL? Uh, October, mid-October. October. Speaking of Drake, <laughs> October's very own. Oh, OVO, 4L. This man sucks at branding. <laughs> like, outside, okay, I mean, okay, look at it, look at it from this, this perspective. Drake is the largest brand ever built in the history of hip-hop. And the fucking personal brand name he picks is October's very own. Is he born in October? He slaps things like October Firm on the front of his albums. I don't I think he was born in October. I don't let me look. Did they call Drake Mr. October? No. I yeah, he was born October 24th. So but like he, I don't just like stake claim over June. But I you just do. take you the made whole it, fucking month. You I, made it chicken like Pride Month. I made it about all of us with, with chicken, chicken legs. legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's just taking the whole fucking month of October for himself, but it just is not that cool of a name. Like, I've never been tempted to purchase some OVO gear. OVO Sound. What, why? Everything is branded with that. And it's just like, <coughs> the same the same call I've made about his shoes, man. These Air Nocta 
Prima Nocta is what they declared in Braveheart, and that's what he named his shoe after, and the shoe sucks. It's just not a good shoe. It's just not a good shoe. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have good taste in fashion. But overall, I don't have beef with him. OVO, I prefer EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Wow. That's great. Happy belated birthday to Daniel Abney. He has two body parts in his last name. Who does? Daniel. He's an ab and a knee. That's right, Jared. Very observant. (laughs) You can watch full episodes of our show on YouTube, by the way, if you never have. We film every Bolin Media podcast. Slap it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Just go to YouTube. Look up Formula Bone. Look up the Ross Bolin podcast. Look up Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. Uh, when it launches here in a couple weeks, that's the only one that's not up yet, actually. Shouts to Sam for getting me some shoes to match Ross's new shoes. Yeah, dude. We've both been hooked up with Under Armour shoes now Hell by yeah. Sam. Awesome. Appreciate that very much. Uh, speaking of merch and such, you can buy RBP merch at bowlandmedia.com slash shop, where we've got merch for all of our brands. bowlandmedia.com slash shop. Follow us on social media. We're on TikTok at the Ross Bolin Podcast. On Instagram at the Ross Bolin Podcast, Twitter at Ross Bolin Pod. I am Ross Bolin. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at WR Bolin. You can follow Jared at Jared Borslow. Follow Formula Bone everywhere at Formula Bone. And listen to uh, the latest episode of the Formula Bone F1 show. What is it? British Grand Prix preview podcast coming out tonight. Woo! Love that. Our other shows are Freeze All, All Motor Functions. We're doing a Westworld Season 4 episode by episode hosted by Jared with uh, myself and Serena from L.A., and uh, we have a blast talking about Westworld. The show is absurd. It's completely derailed through the last two seasons, and it is so much fun to talk about. Uh, So listen to Freeze All Motor Functions. We've got our latest episode out summarizing, discussing, and dissecting the season premiere of Westworld on HBO Max. Speaking of HBO Max, they've got House of the Dragon coming at the end of August, and we've got Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, the number one Game of Thrones podcast in the realm, ready to cover every episode of House of the Dragon, episode by episode, just like we did with Game of Thrones. Myself and Barrett Dudley are very excited to continue the great tradition of being the finest Song of Ice and Fire podcast that money can buy. Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, Freeze All Motor Functions, and my Houston sports podcast, Banging the Can, are all available wherever you listen to the Ross Boland podcast, as is Formula Bone F1 show. Until next time, peace be with you, and also with you.